Senators Virgil Smith and Joe Hewn today led a tour of urban agriculture happening in Detroit. A lot has sprouted up since Smith was growing up here. Were there community gardens here when you were growing up here? And have you Not been... like this. This is really a new phenomenon. Wamina Mensa, manager of D-Town Farm, said that his farm is a project of the Detroit Black Community Food Network, a response to a lack of grocery stores with fresh produce in the city. We decided that uh, due to the lack of access of uh, affordable uh, fruits and vegetables in our community and the uh, exodus of all of the big box stores such as Farmer Jack and, and Kroger's and everything, we decided to do something about that. Now they grow 35 fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Meanwhile, in Brightmoor, there's an effort to turn a blighted neighborhood into one of green space. A path of gardens and abandoned houses turned into artwork include a children's garden and an orchard. There's learning too, on how to walk all over the garden. <laughs> the parts we're gonna walk are, are mainly well tended um, that we've worked on, but if you go just a few blocks, you'll see a lot of trash, a lot of these junk trees that just sprouted up. Um, what else you guys say? Really, really high, tall weeds, people that have just backed up their trailers and dumped concrete and shingles and all these other things. And we deal with it all the time. But, but a lot of this agriculture is happening under the radar. There's technically no agricultural zoning in Detroit, something City Planning Commission member Catherine Underwood is trying to change. Okay, basically, um, what we're trying to do is to legalize and facilitate urban agriculture. Currently, the city code doesn't have anything that uh, defines or sets standards for community gardens and farms. They're running interference with the Right to Farm Act, and the senators have asked Attorney General Bill Schutte for an opinion on whether Department of Agriculture and Rural Development standards for cities over 100,000 are strong enough. When the Right to Farm Act was crafted, urban agriculture wasn't contemplated. So the unintended consequence of that act is that um, it preempts uh, local ordinances that say anything different from the act. So we want to be able to maintain local authority in terms of um, uh, defining agriculture, where it goes, and, and what happens with it. So we're still dealing with uh, some of our concerns about right to farm, and that's really what has put um, the ordinance uh, on hold for over a year. Senator Hewn comes from a more traditional agricultural background and said the ordinances posed unique problems for urban growers. But I'll tell you, we heard today that uh, you're not allowed to have bees in the city of Detroit. I mean, just obscene things that are archaic and ridiculous uh, to have in place. But, they're not allowed but meanwhile, Detroit's getting greener. Smith said urban agriculture is opening doors for people in the city. I've said this plenty of times today, but I just look at this as such a great economic engine. It could be a great economic engine in the city of Detroit. Uh, we have so much open land, as you saw, going through the city. We just got to put good use to it. And I see this as one way of putting good use to all that land and getting people uh, to learn a trade because everybody can't afford to go to college. For Mirrors News, this is Emily Lawler.